Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the banks are now rejecting mortgages for energy inefficient homes or climate unfriendly homes, as they are calling it. This uh, news has just come out. Despite the, uh, the, the turnaround by the British Prime Minister a couple of weeks ago. So this is what the title says then. The banks are now rejecting mortgages for homeowners if the house is not climate friendly under these very hard to reach new climate goals. Um, it just seems to be another wild story after another at the moment. So this is also affecting landlords as well. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a tag team at the moment between the government and the <clears throat> banking industry to um, uh, attack homeowners and landlords around all of this. Uh, drop a comment where you're watching from as well today. I know it's different times for, for everyone watching. So yeah, if you just join the stream here, We've just got news out that <clears throat> despite the Prime Minister actually saying that he was going to do a U-turn on the climate goals, the banks, because they follow the UN goals, the SD, um, SDGs, is it? SDGs? They're actually saying that they are going to continue on with those despite what the Prime Minister says. Very, very interesting. So we're going to see some massive opportunities coming up, by the way, um, for those of you who do purchase homes. We're also going to see some very bad things happening for the average um, person, the average citizen. This is going to affect the middle class very, very badly as well, because and I'll get into all the nitty gritty of this. But it's not just the fact that this is going to affect landlords. It's actually going to affect all the homeowners, these new rules. And they're even putting incentives on for people who um, buy a new home that's energy efficient a so you'll get a better uh, better mortgage better rate and then the worse the energy performance certificate yes an energy performance certificate if you're watching from outside the uk the worth you worse your score on this the harder it's going to be um to get a mortgage or the rates could be astronomical. They could be eight, nine, 10%. We don't exactly know at the moment. So I'm trying to give you this news now so that you can get ahead of the curve on this. <clears throat> and actually that's a question I've got. I'd just like to drop it in the chat. I know m most of you know I've got um, the money psychology course. That's like the first course for you to take. And that teaches you all about the psychology of money and, and wealth and how everything works. Um, and the second course is all on macro. So that's macroeconomics, it's stock market. It's more for people that have got a little bit of money and want to invest it, or you've got a pension, something like that. But I'd like to know in the chat if you would like any other course from me, because I, I, I see occasionally some uh, comments, chat message. Um, so let me know if there's another course. If you want, I don't know, like a a real estate course, a property investment course, can you drop a, a one in the chat or a two if that's of no interest to you? Or just let me know if there's another course that you really want. I know some people have said debt destruction, um, things like that. Just drop it in the chat, please. That would really help me to know what to create for you for the next course. So let's just carry on with this article then, because it is, I mean, I'm I'm absolutely amazed that they're really pushing this so hard. Um, so it says that the lenders, because they are focused on the United Nations goals and not what the Prime Minister of the UK says, the lenders are saying that they are, you know, the, the change, the turnaround makes no difference to them and that <clears throat> they're sticking to their pledges to the United Nations and not to the British government. How on earth can British banks say stock trading course, Marius? Okay, got it. I've got that. Um, how can the British banks say that they have no allegiance to the UK government and their allegiance is to the United Nations? Does that make any sense? Well, yes, it does when you see that they keep focusing on this year 2030, and we know what that means. So this was not long ago then that the PM of the UK, and remember, just because we're talking about the UK here, this 
doesn't just mean it's for the UK. This will hit everywhere eventually because they trial things in one country. If it works, they trial it in a, um, another country. So this is what they've said. The EPC rating, so this was the previous stuff, needed to be a C rating or better by the year 2030. So this is what they were looking at, a C rating or better, otherwise you can't rent the house. And the punishments is a criminal prosecution, they said here, a criminal prosecution for anyone that doesn't meet the new energy performance um, certificate guidelines. And we'll look at what those prosecutions are in a moment. But this, um, we've got Nationwide Building Society, we've got NatWest, we've got, there's a lot of others, HSBC as well. They, they've pledged to make 50% of their mortgage book C rating, so you've got A, B, C, all the way down to F, C ratings by 2030. This is their commitment that they've committed to. So if your home, and this is where it, I'm, I'm sharing this to help you here, if your home doesn't meet this C rating, they are saying, you can read it on their website, they are saying that when you come up for remortgage, the chance of you getting a good remortgage is very low. Read this on their website, it's all in black and white. Uh, they said they want you to have an EPC rating of C or below. But <clears throat> the committee that's behind a lot of the, the government work, Housing and Communities uh, survey published recently said 18% of private rental properties would require £10,000 or more just to get up to a C rating. So they said that it's just not possible. And because of this, we're now seeing a huge amount of properties flooding the market. And there was another survey, I'll probably get to it later on. And what this new survey is saying is that we're gonna see two thirds. I mean, I think that they're probably over egging it a bit here. I'm not sure if these numbers are correct, but they're saying we're gonna see two thirds of all rental properties in the UK hitting the market. They don't give a timeline. I don't, th I don't know if that would actually happen. Um, that seems like too many. You're talking like 65% of properties here hitting the market all at the same time. And they're saying this is going to happen because the rule, they won't be able to remortgage, you see. That's what they're, they're claiming, that the landlords won't be able to remortgage. And I, I kind of get where they're going with that because if you think of the typical rental property, let's focus on the UK in particular, for those of you watching from outside. You have a lot of these row houses, terraced houses. <clears throat> You're not going, you can be able to do the basic stuff. You can do, you know, change the light bulbs to energy efficient bulbs. You can do certain things within the property. You can may, maybe do some cavity wall insulation or external if it's a, you know, sort of a house built around World War II region. There's certain things that you can do, all right? There's certain things that you can do to improve a home and it's insulation, put some insulation in the roof, things like that. But what they're talking about with all these heat pumps, where exactly, how, how is this going to, how is this exactly going to work? I'm not sure. So that this is one of the issues that they want them to spend up to £30,000 of their own money upgrading these properties. I just can't see it myself. So let's see what some of the statements say here. Okay, the banks also want to incentivize energy efficiency upgrades for borrowers. NatWest and others offering now fixed rate discounted mortgages to con uh, customers who are remortgaging their home with a valid EPC certificate, so energy performance certificate rating of A or B. Uh, that's very difficult to get. Uh, so one of the claims, and this is pure prejudice by banks and they're looking into the legalities of this, but one of the one of the claims here is that this is just so difficult because the banks have unlimited money and they're backed up by the WEF, they're backed up by the United Nations um, and all of their legal teams. So they're saying that this is just, um, it's pointless even trying to go after the banks to get them to change their mind here. Banks are free to offer products, this was the statement from one of the banks, to new customers and be clear about the conditioning um, they apply to those products but applying EPC conditions retrospectively to existing mortgage um, borrowers, th these are people, would be completely wrong and immoral, and they're gonna challenge the banks on this. 
I mean, this is pretty pretty wild if they are actually permitted to, to bring this, this in. Let's see what else this, uh, some of these are. I've got about 10 articles here. I've just combined it into a big, big thing here for you so you can save a lot of time. This is another a time saver for you. Um, Nat West then has said, under our approach to climate change, the bank sets out its net zero policy, including making 50% of our UK mortgage customers' homes at or above a C rating by 2030. Now, it goes on to talk about how if you don't have a C rating, so you really need to check this for your property. This is all of you, whether it's your home, whether it's a rental property you've got by 2030, but some of these pledges are by 2025. They're starting it now. So you've got just over a year. They're talking about that they won't refinance your mortgage. So if you want to you know, refinance your mortgage, there's about four big banks that are saying they won't take on your mortgage. So you really need to look at this now, look into any um, grants or anything else that the government is offering. Otherwise, you could be hit so, so hard. And I think what's probably going to happen is people are going to get caught by surprise. And people aren't going to realise that all these draconian things that they think is probably a conspiracy theory or something, actually exists now it's just the media hasn't put it out but we're able to find me and my i've just taken on a, a researcher as, as many of you know uh, only a young lad but very very good he's doing a really good job at helping me find some of these um hidden things that you wouldn't find otherwise especially while i'm traveling at the moment i'll be back home by the weekend again we can get back in the studio then but um yeah it's <clears throat> it's pretty crazy some of the things that are that are hidden or hidden in plain sight, and that even some of the mortgage lenders didn't tell me this when I was asking them. They didn't want to get into it, which is interesting. Now, we also have Nationwide Building Society, and their mortgage book target is the same as NatWest at 50%. Now, they're saying something quite interesting as well, so they're, they're offering incentives. They are rewarding you with a £500 cash back if your property has a score of 92 or above, and you'll get a 250 pound cash back if your property has a score of 86 to 91. Yep, yeah, HSBC has similar things. Actually, HSBC says that if you have a property you're looking to buy and it has an EPC below what we might expect, but they don't say what that is, you could find your application is rejected. Now, this is really interesting as well, because more than 65,000 rental pro properties were put up for sale in the first three months, January, February, March of this year. Around 50% of those had an EPC rating of D or less. So the claim is that a lot of landlords are just offloading these properties quickly because they know they are maybe terraced houses. There's just no way to hit these targets. And because of that, they they will basically become, and again, I don't think I'm being alarmist to say this, if you can't get past, say, an E rating or a D rating, and if you're an assessor, please drop comments below and you can help us all to understand this situation because it is a lot more intricate, I understand. But if we get to, say, 2030 and you can't get your property past, say, an E rating or something like that, then what are you going to do with the property? I mean, there's just, what can you do with it? You're not gonna be able to rent it. You're not gonna be able to sell it. So there's gonna be some real big difficulties here. <clears throat> there was an, another study for England and Wales and they found that 1.7 million properties um, physically, so they did a full survey with assessors as well. They physically cannot reach a C rating. And I looked at that and thought, well, they couldn't have assessed 1.7 million properties. No, what they actually did was they looked at the, the properties that were built in this area. And then from that assessment, they looked at, okay, these houses were all the same builder. They were all built in the same way. So that's how they got to it. So that was in the, um, the footnotes there. Rightmove, which is the biggest property portal in the UK, have said 59% of 24 million homes are rated D or lower and will be unable to be lifted up to a C. So what are gonna ha what's gonna happen to these houses? Are they gonna be knocked down? I mean, there's no exemption for this. What will happen if they can't get to a C? I, I don't know. Drop in the comments what you think's gonna happen to these homes. 
11 million homes lack an EPC because they haven't been sold or rented since the scheme inception. So they're saying this is a ticking time bomb for the rentals and the sales market if and when these homes come to market because there's the, a lot of them are just off the grid. Yeah, not off the grid, so they, they're outside the scope of all the me metrics. So there's 11 million homes that are gonna come on as well at some point. <clears throat> Now, this, this was an interesting statement. This was from the Green Party. So the Green Party wants private tenants to be able to force landlords to improve the energy efficiencies of their homes, even if they meet the current criteria. What? Sorry? Um, they want tenants to report on, snitch, let's use that word, landlords who they think may not have a good energy efficient home where there's actually things that they can do. And they're saying incentives will be provided to the tenants for reporting, or let's just say it how it is, for snitching on landlords, even though they might be meeting the criteria anyway. Uh, so what is an EPC then? This is a, a mandatory certificate when a property is built, sold or rented, just in case you don't know what this is, it's in the UK. And they must be obtained before marketing the property for sale or for rent. Okay, so that's what, what, what it is in a nutshell. Landlords now, so this is current, face a fine of up to £4,000 if they fail to meet the minimum efficiency requirement. Um, however, most properties in the UK are graded D or E at present. Um, another, another statement that's come out then, and this is from the landlord body, they say the, it's an impossible task to meet these requirements. Impossible, that's what they say. They say only 41% of homes in England meet the recommended energy rating. Um, new research from the Open Property Group reveals only 41% have a C rating or above in 2023. And this is only an increase of 1% from last year in 2022, despite all the huge amount of money that was thrown at incentives to improve homes. They're saying it's just too difficult to do it. Um, and then, of course, we know because I, I did a video on the U-turns as well. So there's a there was the sort of ban on the old boilers and liquid petroleum gas and things like that. That's going to be delayed until 2035 now, not 2030. OK, OK, this is a big one. This is what you need to know. Not meeting these energy efficiency requirements would have resulted by, and this is in the short term, of a fine of up to 30 thousand pounds by landlords now i talked about this before because what happens if you didn't you couldn't pay that fine well this is where they do what's um quite common in the us that their liens uh they, they put a lien on the property so the government would put or the council would put a lien on the property so if you can't pay the thirty thousand, that they could then put this lien on the property it's like a, a debt i guess we can say for the uk people it's like a debt against the property or a penalty that you have to pay off. So this is what they're talking about. And then the property could be confiscated by the government. And then it would, it's kind of like a, I guess we can say it's a bit like socialism. They want to then redistribute these properties because they don't have enough social housing. Just weird. We know all, where all of this is coming from anyway. Okay, so I mean, let me, let me wrap up with this. How, how could this actually affect people then? What's the result then? Well, there's at least 25%, we know, as a minimum of landlords that will never be able to reach this level. And also for a lot of homeowners, they'll never be able to reach this level. So what we're probably going to see is a lot more landlords or a lot more people selling these properties now rather than going into, you know, everything that we were, we were talking about um, later on. It's, it's not good. It's not good. A lot of issues, a lot of a lot of big issues around this. But um, just be just prepare for it now. That's why I brought I, I try and bring you this information as early as I can on all these things. So just start preparing for it now. And um, yeah, please drop a comment as well um, about what I said. What would you like me to create on the next course? I've seen real estate, property investing, 
um, trading, there's a few other things. Just let me know in the comments below what you would like, um, if it's a debt destruction, if it's something that's gonna help us to move through um, everything we're going through at the moment. All right, well, thank you for being online. God bless you guys, God bless your families. Really appreciate you and I'll see you next time.